Hi, I'm Mike. The beginning of haying season is only a few short weeks away. And now is the time to find out if we're gonna have hay. Is it gonna be worth the time to cut it? And how the hay situation now can affect the ranch for years to come. It's all today on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Welcome to our Wyoming life. We invite you to subscribe and come with us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. We post videos three times per week, bringing you into all the aspects of ranching and farming in our little corner of Wyoming. It's all real as it happens. There's a lot going on around the ranch these days. Cows are nearing the end of calving. We still have a few left, but a majority of the new babies are on the ground and happy. Calving season was a busy one and overall we did really good and so did our moms. We ended up with four sets of twins and four bottle calves that are starting to get weaned already. Everything's growing, getting stronger, and getting bigger. One thing we wait for to grow every year is the grass. This is the farming part of our operation. You see, deep down, every rancher is a farmer. But here it's not wheat or barley or peas or corn. It's grass. Every rancher, when you get all the way down to it, is a grass farmer. And growing grass can be one of the most frustrating parts of ranching around here. Ranching for me is a very cause and effect type of business. If something is broken, you can fix it. A fence needs mended, you can mend it. And if a cow is having trouble having a calf, you can go and help her. It's a very hands-on profession and great for that person that has a mindset that says you have to go and fix the problems. Farming is a little different here. I can't go out and make the grass grow. I can't make it rain. I can't make the sun shine. There are some things that I can do. I can reseed, I can fertilize, I can amend the soil. But without the things that are out of my control like rain and sunshine, I could just be flushing money down the drain. In fact, two years ago, we reseeded half of the hay fields, over 250 acres, and we're still waiting to see a return on that. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the hay in the fields, measure and estimate our yield at this point, and see what kind of growth we need over the next month, and try to figure out where the ranch sits when it comes to hay production for the year. We're also gonna set up an irrigation experiment and see what kind of difference the right amount of rain can make to a pasture and how that moisture could change things for us, one way or the other. When it comes down to it, without a decent hay crop this year, we're gonna have to sell cows. That's the plain truth. We can't afford to buy hay for all these cows again, and changes will have to be made in the entire structure of the ranch to keep it going. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Let's hope the rain falls and the sun shines and the grass grows. Here on the ranch, we have eight different hay fields that we harvest for hay every single year. Each one is between 50 and 160 acres. And all told, they measure over 500 acres of harvestable hay ground. The cows don't set foot in these pastures until hay is harvested and moved out to a hay storage yard. In a good year, we can harvest hay at the rate of one ton per acre. Hay is made up of a number of native prairie grasses from wheat grasses, rye grasses, different clovers, and alfalfas. Each time you cut hay, it's called a cutting. And after you cut hay, you rake it, and you bale it, and you get it off the field. In some places, you can do the whole thing over again in a few weeks as the rain falls and it grows back. Some areas even get three or four or even five cuttings created by natural rainfall or through irrigation. Here, if you have 100 acres of hay and you get a ton an acre, that's 100 tons per cutting. If you had four cuttings, you could have 400 tons of hay off of that 100 acres, and that's all we'd need to get us through the winter. We'd be done. Unfortunately for us, we don't get four or three or even two cuttings of hay. We get one, one shot per year to make the hay that the cows will depend on all winter long and that's why we have over 500 acres of hay ground. Each cow is gonna eat about 30 pounds of feed per day on average. We figure winter around here, about 180 days. 
Sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's shorter. And when the math works out, the easiest way to look at it is you need 1,000 pounds of hay per cow per month. If we're feeding for six months of the year, that's three tons of hay per cow. Our current stocking rate puts us at 150 cows, and we need 450 tons of hay for those cows. Add in the bulls, any heifers we might keep back, and the horses, and you might as well call it 500. If our 500 acres of hay ground puts out an average of one ton per acre, then we're okay. We'll have enough hay. It's hard for me to look at a hay field in April and say, this hay field is gonna produce one ton per acre this year. But one tried and true way to know for sure what you're looking at when it comes to hay production is to get out and cut some. Now we can't start hauling out hay equipment and making bales quite yet, but we can scale things back and figure out how a larger scale hay production would work out. I've said this before, but I'm not a big math guy. But I find myself using math a lot. I guess what my ninth grade teacher said about using math in real life was true. Although, I very much doubt that he knew that there'd be an app for that. This is Mackenzie's Hula Hoop. 26 inches across with an area of 531 inches, or 3.69 square feet, and one acre is 43,560 square feet. So we're gonna have to do some math. I'll spare you the math. If we cut the grass inside this circle, weigh it, then take that times the percentage of our area, we can figure out where we sit right now for hay. We also keep records for hay height every year, and we can look back at those and compare them at how we sit for this year. Now, I'm not super scientific when it comes to this, but I do know enough to take a few samples from around the ranch in different areas and different hay fields. For example, in 2015, we averaged 1.3 tons of hay per acre. It was a great year. Also, back in 2015, we had 5.33 inches of rain by June 1st, and the average height of the hay was a little under 12 inches tall. Up to today, we've had 2.96 inches of rain. Now we can compare that to today. But first, we have to get our samples. So we've got our hay cut and bagged. All that's ne left next is to go weigh it and do some math. All right. So previously I have dried some hay just to figure out how much loss we're gonna have when it dries. And most of these bags are gonna come down to about a quarter of their weight right now. So, all we have to do is weigh some bags. Okay. The plastic bag itself weighs 0 .03, so we'll knock that off. And then we'll divide that by four to get our numbers. So right now, as we sit, 944 pounds per acre. We're looking for 2,000 pounds per acre, so basically we need to have twice as much yield as we have out there, and we've got a month to do it. 
we're honestly not looking too bad. If we harvested today, we would be a little bit less than a half a ton per acre, which is twice the amount of hay that we harvested last year. Still, we'd have to buy some, but be better than buying all of it. Rain is so important. When the rain isn't there, the grass goes into shock and starts to head out, thinking it needs to reseed itself immediately to survive. Once it heads out or goes to seed, it's done growing. That's pretty much it for its height, and it's ready to be cut. And now it's time to set up our experiment for this haying season. We're gonna irrigate a very small portion of this hay field, as much as a sprinkler could reach. The sprinkler is going to be set to turn on every day for 15 minutes and we'll record how much water is put down using this ridiculously large rain gauge that Aaron got for me. Again, not horribly scientific, but hey, I'm working with what I have here. We're going to be checking over the next few weeks to see how much difference there is in production between the irrigated and non-irrigated grass. We'll also compare the amount of rain that each area gets. You may be wanting to ask, why don't you just irrigate your hay fields? Well, I'll give you a couple reasons. The first one is that irrigation equipment is extremely expensive, but the main reason is that we don't have an irrigation source. There's no river running through it that we could irrigate out of. Now we could irrigate from a well and groundwater, but the state has to approve all irrigation coming directly from the water aquifer at the rate of about a million gallons per week needed to irrigate only 50 acres or so, they're not gonna approve it. This is dry land farming. My partner is Mother Nature, and I rely on her a lot, and quite frankly, her work ethic some years kinda sucks. She's this close to getting replaced by the Easter Bunny or that Irish fellow with the pot of gold. But just when her job is really in jeopardy, she pulls out the win. Hopefully she can do the same this year. We need rain, we need warm temperatures, and we need growth, lots of it. Without it, we might be in trouble. Last year, we averaged a quarter ton per acre in our hay harvest. That's right at the point where it's really not even worth it to cut in machine time and costs. We ended up buying around 400 tons of hay at a cost of $50,000. If we end up in the same situation this year, honestly, the ranch can't afford it will end up selling cows, reducing the amount of mouths to feed all winter long, but also raising income to pay for the hay for the remaining cows. We hate to do it. In fact, once you start reducing your herd size, it's really hard to bounce back. So let's not think about that. Ranchers and farmers are forever optimists. And optimism may just be the most important personality trait of any successful farmer or rancher. We depend a lot on the rain, luck, and weather, and tons of other factors that are really out of our control. We have good years, we have bad years. And if you know a farmer or a rancher, you've heard the words, things will get better next year. That's why diversification is so important on today's farms. You grow market gardens for farmer's markets. You work on the side to help the cash flow during the rough times. And you say, next year, that's my year, the eternal optimist. We have roughly a month until it's time to get out in the field and start cutting hay. Between now and then, we'll hope and pray for rain. We're gonna watch our experimental plot and see the difference a steady rain makes in the grass. And we'll wait. Branding is just a couple weeks away and we'll be bringing in all the calves, vaccinating them, tagging them, branding them, and I hope you're able to subscribe and join us as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Like us on Facebook for updates that you can't find anywhere else and join us on Tuesday as we continue the project list and the new high tunnel build. Until then, have a great week and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. This is Mackenzie's hula hoop. Child size, 26 inches across, with an area of about, uh, what is it? I don't remember.
No. That's enough of that. 